Hey everyone, are you ready to dive into the world of 3D printing but don't know where to start? Don't worry, I've got your back. Today we're gonna to be breaking down how to choose your very first 3D printer step by step. Let's make this fun, easy, and of course, no tech headaches. Stick around to find out which printer might turn you into the next 3D printing pro. I'm Jim, and this is The Edge of Tech. Welcome to the Edge of Tech Studios, powered by STL Flix. If you want to save some money, check out that link in the description below that'll take you to the STL Flix website where you'll find a bunch of really cool stuff. But first things first, what are you printing? Action figures, replacement parts, or maybe you're dreaming of making your own Iron Man suit like Frank. For hobbies and toys, an entry-level printer will do just fine. For functional parts, that entry-level printer is gonna be just fine as well, but maybe you need something a little bigger for those functional parts. For large projects, maybe you need something with an even larger build volume. Knowing this up front saves you from buying the wrong printer and will save you money in the long run since you'll get the printer that fits your needs the first time and not have to buy it again. Next up, we need to talk about the two main types of 3D printers. There's FDM and resin. I know that sounds fancy, but it's actually pretty simple. FDM here is the most beginner friendly and you get material that comes on a roll or spool and it's filament just like this. It kind of looks like a weed whacker line if you've ever used like a string trimmer or a weed whacker, whatever, whatever you call it. But it comes on a roll, it goes down into the printer through the hot end, it melts in that hot end and then it creates your model just by layers. That's how this works, that's FDM. Easiest and cleanest way to get started. Resin, on the other hand, comes in a bottle like this. It is a liquid that's actually cured with UV. You get much sharper details, but it's quite a bit messier to handle. It's actually perfect if you're into like super small or really, really detailed miniatures. Uh, resin is really good for that, or maybe like jewelry, that kind of stuff. Um, but to be honest, FDM has come a long way, especially if you use something small like a 0.2 nozzle. And you can get some really good results with that too. This one prints with a liquid that's UV cured. This one is much easier to start with in my opinion. And you can get some really good results with FDM as well. Here's a fun analogy, think of it like this. FDM is your classic pepperoni. It's simple, satisfying, and you love to eat it. But resin is like your gourmet truffle pizza. Fancy, but requires much more effort to eat. <laughs> if that makes any any sense at all. <laughs> now let's talk money. You don't wanna go broke for your very first 3D printer. If you're gonna be more budget friendly, which I highly suggest, you can find some really great options for under $300. The mid-range printers will probably end up costing you about 300 to say 800 bucks, but it opens up some more features and maybe a bigger build area. The higher end printers, the higher end printers is what we'll call them, Above 800 bucks is where you're gonna be. These are like the Ferraris of 3D printers, the ones that are super good, but to be honest, the ones for 300 and, and lower can be really good too, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But like I said, above 800 bucks, and you're gonna get a very good 3D printer. But there's a catch to this that we're gonna talk about in a minute. Here's a tip, maybe start smaller, and you can always upgrade if you need to later. You wanna buy the printer that you need and what's gonna fit for you, but you don't need to buy the biggest, most expensive thing to start, especially if you're just getting into 3D printing and you don't even know if you're gonna like it yet. Now let's talk about some things you should look for in a beginner-friendly 3D printer. Now you don't need a PhD to start printing. Trust me, I didn't have one and I started printing just fine, but we do need to look for some features. Some things you wanna look for are easy assembly, or a printer that can even come pre-assembled is even better, but the less assembly the better, unless you're the type of the person that loves to build a kit. There are a ton of really cool kits out there and, and you can spend a lot of time to build your own printer and you'll get to know every nut and bolt of that printer. But most people, especially nowadays, they just want something that works and I highly suggest something that's super easy or even comes pre-built. Auto bed leveling and calibration are something that's a must have in 2024 and I definitely think you need to make sure the printer you get has these things. No one likes manually tweaking things for hours and hours just to get it to work, unless you're the type of person that does, and that's okay. But again, most people will want the auto bed leveling and the calibration right out of the box, so make sure your printer has that. The other thing we wanna look for is user-friendly software, because confusing software equals instant regret, 
and you start not wanting to print, you get discouraged, and it just kind of has a really bad taste in your mouth. But we don't want to go down that road. We want to make sure the software is easy to use, especially when you're starting to learn. And there's some bonus points here if the printer you choose has a really good online community. That can be in several different places, whether it's Discord or Facebook or any other forums, but that'll allow you to reach out and ask for help when you get that crazy spaghetti monster and you don't know what to do. Hi, this is Tristan. He's my son, if you didn't know that. <laughs> He's actually being the director today, starting and stopping the videos, right? Good, all right. I need to jump in real quick and talk about today's sponsor, PCBWay. If you're looking for custom PCBs, or maybe just testing a project out and wanna have one made to make sure it works, or you're looking for CNC routing, 3D printing, resin 3D printing, SLS 3D printing, like we did with that Death Racer back in June, PCBWay has you covered. They have a super easy website to navigate, all you gotta do is go to the service you're looking for, drop your model in, and you can get a quote pretty dang fast. They have awesome customer service and they send you your stuff super fast too. So check out PCBWay and thank you so much PCBWay for these Christmas gifts that you sent me. I really appreciate that too. Everybody, check out PCBWay. There'll be a link in the description. Now back to it. So with all that being said, which printers should you choose? Here are some of my top picks for beginners just like you. We are gonna start with the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. This is hands down, in my opinion, the best beginner 3D printer you can buy, and it starts at only $199 for the base printer here. Some of the things about the A1 Mini is it's called Mini because it has a little bit smaller of a build plate, but this thing packs in all of the calibration you could ask for. It literally does everything for you. Not only that, it comes with a ton of tutorials and groups and videos out there on how to use it and a huge community behind it. So I highly suggest if you're okay with the 180 by 180 by 180 millimeter build area that this provides, you start with this printer. You definitely won't go wrong, I promise you that. Next up, we have the Bamboo Lab A1. This is a larger version of the A1 Mini, and the build area on this is 256 by 256 by 256. At only $339 for the base printer, this thing is a steal of a deal. This comes with all of the calibrations of the A1 Mini, which means pretty much everything you could want. Like I said, the build area is actually 256 by 256, by 256 cubed, and this is the difference between that and the A1 Mini. Let's see if I can get a good shot. So the A1 Mini is on the top there, and the uh, A1 is on the bottom. So quite a bit bigger of a build area if you have the budget to go with the A1. It is a little bit more expensive, but definitely worth it for that size. Now both of these have the optional AMS light, which allows you to do four colors or multi-material printing on the printer. You saw that with the A1 Mini, and you're gonna see it here with the A1 as well. So this allows you to do four different colors, it allows you to do different materials if you wanna do that. You can load it up with the same color and it'll actually back up if one runs out. It gives you a lot of functionality, but you don't have to have that to start 3D printing. This is my second best printer to get into 3D printing, and I don't think you can beat this with pretty much anything else out there right now. Now the Bamboo Lab P1S is my third option for the best 3D printer for beginners. This has the same build area as the A1 at 256 by 256 by 256. Actually, even the same build plate as well. Now this is an enclosed Core XY printer, which means it has an enclosure on the printer. When you close the glass door, it is sealed. It won't let drafts in or out, and it allows you to print higher temp things like ABS and nylon. If you do that, you wanna probably grab the hardened nozzle. We'll talk about that in a later video. But one really cool thing about this, as I mentioned, is it's a Core XY, which means the print head actually stays in the top and goes around at the top while your build area moves up and down to it. This allows it to be a little bit faster, even though the A1 to A1 Mini are very fast printers. Now, again, this has the option of the AMS. You can load up to four filaments in here, do multicolor, you can do multi-material, you can do the same color. It gives you a ton of options, but it raises the price just a little bit. I believe that this one starts at $599 and you can add the AMS on from there. So it's a little bit more expensive than the other two as well. Now we talked about the multicolor thing. If you don't know what I mean by multicolor, this is a good example. It uses uh, white and blue and orange and black, all four colors. And this was a multicolor print. 
Now, just know that the AMS on all of these machines is cheaper to get when you buy it the first time than to add it on later. But if you don't have the budget, that's okay. Just start with the base printer and add the AMS on later if you need it. Last but not least on the list of printers is the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. You currently don't see one here on the bench because all of mine are actually printing right now. But if you're looking for the best printer that Bamboo Lab offers and you have the budget starting at $1,299, this is the printer for you. Not only does it come with all of the other cool stuff we saw on the other printers, but it actually adds more sensors. It has a LiDAR sensor to check out the layers and it scans the first layer of your print. It can detect spaghetti. So if you're getting some crazy spaghetti, which means your print is failing and kind of going all over the place, it'll actually detect that and should pause the printer. But if we're being 100% honest, you probably would be fine with the P1S just adding the 0.4 hardened nozzle and letting that roll. If you do care about the LiDAR sensor and you know the spaghetti detection and that extra stuff, go for it. They are amazing printers. But truth be told, it's the same frame and same drive as the Bamboo Lab P1S. Now, I know a few of you out there are going to say, listen, Jim, everything you've talked about is Bamboo Lab printers in this video, and you're correct. Uh, and there's a reason for that because right now at the timing of this video, when I made this video in December of 2024, they make the best 3D printers for beginners. All around ecosystem is the best you can get currently, the best prices, the best community, the best slicer. You can put their filament in their printer with the AMS and it'll detect the filament and automatically tell the printer what filament you're using. It's awesome. So check them out. That's the reason why I recommend them. They are just so easy to learn. And if you're just somebody who wants to have a printer and just have it work right out of the box with minimal tinkering and all that stuff, Bamboo Lab is the best for you. So that's why I only mention them. In my opinion, you can't get better, especially for $199 for that A1 Mini. Now, if we jump to the resin side of things, the Elegoo Saturn IV Ultra is my current choice for my favorite 3D printer for beginners if you're going to start with resin. Elegoo makes some really good resin printers, and this one has been great for me. This is the least issues I've ever had on a 3D printer before, uh, as far as resin goes. And to be honest with you, um, I don't even have an affiliate with uh, Elgu or anything. I think I'll probably put like a Amazon link in if they have it on Amazon, but it's just such a good printer and, and I love what it does. So if you're looking for a resin printer to start with, this is a great printer to start with. It's got a really good build plate size. Uh, it's very fast and it actually, I've never had a failure. So. Uh, knock on wood on that one because you never know what's going to happen, but it does a really good job. Now, I do have to put out one warning when you're picking your first 3D printer, and that's if you buy one 3D printer, it might turn into five in a couple months. I don't want to tell you how I know that, but just trust me. <laughs> I do also have to throw a quick disclaimer in there that resin is not as easy as it looks. It's not bad, but you do need extra things to make resin 3D printing working. And you always wanna wear uh, like a mask and gloves and eye protection because the resin is very toxic, especially on your skin to, to some people. Now you'll need some other stuff. So do some research. It's not for this video, but do some research before you get into resin printing to see what you'll need to get started. Now, before you go and hit add to cart on any of the printers that I showed you today, do some research first. Watch reviews, check out other YouTube channels and, and look at the reviews on their printers. Look at my reviews on these printers if I have one out there. Check out Facebook and Discord groups and stuff like that. Just make sure you're picking the right one for you. Part of that, like we talked about, is deciding which size printer is the best for your situation and if you want or need that multicolor printing. A little research now will save you a ton of money and frustration later because you won't get something you don't want in the beginning. Some final tips before you buy your very first 3D printer. Don't forget that you're gonna need other things like filament or resin or other supplies you may not have. So make sure you budget for that in your overall budget for your first 3D printer. Also make sure your space fits the 3D printer you're gonna get. Nobody wants their 3D printer sitting in their kitchen on the counter, I guess unless you're CNC kitchen and you're cooking up some steaks or something like that. 
<laughs> just remember, if you have a table, measure it, and then look up the dimensions of the printer you're looking for to make sure it will fit on that table. That's a very important thing. You don't want to set it like on the carpet or something. You want to make sure it's on a flat surface and that'll give you the best results. Also remember the best 3D printer is the one that you have and you actually use. If you buy one that I recommend here today, that's great, I really appreciate it. If you find another one outside of this video that fits your needs even better, that's great too. Just get one and start having fun using it. It doesn't matter which one you have, it doesn't matter what brand it is, the best one you have is the one in front of you melting that plastic. So grab one and have fun. So there you have it, everything you need to choose your very first 3D printer. Whether you're printing keychains or castles, just remember, Start simple, have fun, and embrace the learning curve because there's definitely going to be one. Let me know in the comments below which printer caught your eye. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for more 3D printing, CNC, and laser videos. And if you haven't seen the next video in the playlist here, check out this one. It's next.